Thank you very much. And actually, you can have your laptops out and your phones out because if you can make changes along the way, and actually you'll, you'll find it really, really easy to continue things as well. And also what you have to do, because I'm going to show you a little trick halfway through, is get your mobile out and get your LinkedIn app out. So if you don't have the LinkedIn app, make sure you have the LinkedIn app on your phone because I'm going to show you a neat trick which you can use at any event, at any conference you ever go to, even parties. And you'll be amazed. You go, how does this use the parties? You'll see exactly how you can use this at parties and conferences and events and everything. And it's a really, really neat trick. But it only works if everyone does it at the same time in the same room. So do that. So there's no problem getting um, your mobiles out. This is very much about you. Um, so make sure that you ask questions. It's very interactive. So it's very much about you kind of like you learning about things, you understanding how you do things. Um, so do ask questions along the way. Don't just leave it towards the end, but you just keep it rolling because you'll guarantee that somebody else is also thinking the same thing. So make sure you say, well, how do you do that? Or what do I do this? Or what do you think about this? Or what's the policy about this? Also, we've got uh, giving you away three different books. So you might have kind of one or two. You can share with your friends. You can exchange. You can ask me for another one. But basically, there's three different books here uh, that we have, which is the LinkedIn Mastery book, which is the first book really about the basics of how to use LinkedIn. The second one's about personal branding. It's very much about you, how you use LinkedIn for your career, how you use it for your goals, your ambitions how you get promotion at IDC, how you basically start running IDC, how you become you know, managing director of IDC, whatever you want to achieve um, through your personal branding on LinkedIn. And then the third one is very much about social selling. How you can socially sell yourself to socially sell IDC um, and use things like Sales Navigator, Point Drive, um, content marketing strategies, <coughs> and all the principles of that, which we're going to go through a bit today as well, in regards to the top 10 tips. So basically, all the tips are included in here. Um, the you can also have a copy of the presentation as well. You can also ask me messages afterwards if you have a question you don't want to ask in front of everybody else. And then you can ask me that question kind of privately as well. I'm an open profile on LinkedIn, which means even if you're not connected, uh, basically you can send me a message. You should be all connected because my team's been busy kind of like sending you messages the whole time. Um, so why listen to me is always a good way to kind of start that because there's lots of other people out there who basically say they can do LinkedIn. <coughs> but they basically don't have 1,100 LinkedIn recommendations, which is the most of anybody in the whole of the world when it comes to LinkedIn. So we're very much kind of saying, well, it's not just us saying we're pretty good at doing LinkedIn. Um, it's actually the 1,100 other people who have actually seen my talks or experienced black marketing on our service, which said, yes, these guys do a very good job. And we have clients all over the world. So it's not just people in Singapore or even in Asia that actually are recommending us. And we won lots of LinkedIn profile awards, which is basically the power profile is awarded by LinkedIn. So it's completely independent. And they basically say the top 50, top 40 people in the whole of Singapore, most engaged profile, they give an award out. Um, often it's people like Piyush Gupta at you know, DBS, just because he's the CEO of DBS. Um, but us SMEs and people like yourselves have to work a bit harder to basically get that kind of engagement. So if you follow some of these tips today, you'll see that and you'll get some of those tips and you too can become a power profile if you dedicate um, yourself to doing this. Um, we also won lots of awards, the Black Marketing Team, of which Matthew is our, part of our video team, <coughs> who's bidding us today, for example, um, is basically won the B2B Marketing Agency of the Year Award late, lately, for example, and Best Brand and so forth. Uh, let's say we have the three books. Uh, we also have the five different brands. So we have Black Marketing, it's been going for six years now. Um, I created it in 2014. Um, and now we employ 35 people in Singapore, We've got hundreds of clients across the whole of the world, but it's very much a Singaporean company with 95% of um, the team are Singaporean. Um, we have a keynote speaker brand, which is very different. It promotes women keynote speakers, because what we noticed was that there was too many viewers out there who promoted men, and they normally tend to be the same men every single time. So we actually wanted to turn it around and say there's too many panels, there's too many uh, keynotes out there. We are purely, purely men and not even kind of like differential, not even Asian men. They tend to be kind of, you know, white middle class men who basically get the same talks, the same time and the same experts. So we're challenging that with a brand called Rockstar, which is actually <laughs> two applause there. One for a woman, one for an Asian guy. So, <laughs> so both of you are part of our diversity push. So yeah. <laughs> But it's true because a lot of people say it's not just, uh, as I was uh, speaking to an Indian speaker last week, and he said it's not just about women speakers, actually about Indian speakers as well. They don't, they don't get much um, share either. I'm not just talking about Asia here. We're talking about Europe and America. We're talking about globally. Uh, it's a big, big problem. So that's why I call people out on LinkedIn. If I see a picture of six men in a row on a panel, for example, I'll say, what the hell is this doing in 2019? Because it shouldn't be happening. It should be diversity. 
because you can't tell me you can't find an expert anywhere in the world. There's a woman speaker who's an expert in the particular field. They just haven't tried looking, basically. Or they've just gone to their circle, and their circle tends to be men because they're a man, they're a man themselves. So that's what this is pushing. It's run by um, a kind of Singaporean woman here. Who basically, is pushing it out there. We've got clients all over the world. We have over, over 120 female speakers now, some in America, some in the UK, some in Hong Kong, some in Singapore, some in Australia. And very much pushing those experts uh, who are as good as, if not better, than many of the male speakers out there. And then we have our big conference. So we had this last year at Microsoft, <coughs> which a few of you attended, and we had 20 fantastic speakers. And it was so successful, we sold out 400 people over at Microsoft HQ. So this year, we're going one step bigger. We're going to Marina Bay Sands. So Marina Bay Sands will be July the 9th, and we're doing group discounts. So if you can persuade your team members to buy 100 tickets or 50 tickets, there's some great discounts up there. Literally anything from $129 to $199. And it's 20 speakers talking about social selling. So literally experts from around the world. We've got some of the best speakers from North America, from Australia, from the UK flying in just to basically share their insights in terms of social selling. We've also got some of the best speakers here in Singapore. And we have more women speakers than we do male speakers. So we're actually practicing what we preach. We actually have 12 women speakers and eight male speakers. Um, so we're actually saying this can be done. You can actually have women speakers out there who can give great tips and great tricks and experience in terms of their sharing for the social selling audience at Marina Bay Science on July the 9th. Uh, we also have the Masterclass brand, which is what this is part of. Um, but why LinkedIn? So LinkedIn's really, really important, but why is LinkedIn and why am I showing you Google? Well, nine times out of 10, if someone's gonna meet you, they tend to meet you and they tend to do some research before they meet you. First way of doing research is tend to be Google. So when I Google someone, for example, say I Googled Eva, the first thing that comes up is her website, but the second thing that comes up is her LinkedIn profile. You notice that I didn't even put a LinkedIn into her um, profile up there in terms of Google, but it still comes up. <coughs> because LinkedIn and Google kind of work together and lo Google looks at the LinkedIn profile and says, how difficult is it to create that? How many links has it got? How many parts of it? Uh, and then it puts it here as opposed to Facebook and Twitter, which tends to be third, fourth, sixth, seventh page. It doesn't tend to be very high because you get lots of fake Facebook accounts and Instagram accounts and Twitter accounts, for example. Whereas you don't get, um, any fake LinkedIn accounts because it's very hard to actually create a fake LinkedIn account. So it's all about this is why you should very much look at your LinkedIn profile because people are Googling you now whether you like it or not. And then the first impression they get, if you look at IDCs, for example, Eva's, um, is that kind of positive impression. So you basically have to look at the background picture, the picture, the headline, the summary section and so forth. <coughs> I'm going to go through some of your profiles a bit later on. So um, you might want to leave the room at that stage or uh, take some notes. Um, so I only picked out some of them, or my team have picked out some of them, so you have to be wait in suspense about who we're going uh, to pick on, so pick on us to focus on. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the LinkedIn company page, obviously you should be following this, the IDC page, because again it's very important, people are Googling the company page, and you should be following this, but it's not as important as the personal page. Because obviously the personal page is when they're about to meet you, they're Googling you, they're finding out about you, they want to know about you, and they want to hear about kind of like your thoughts, who you're connected to, what your experience is, what your education is, what your nonprofit stuff is, all those kind of different aspects that make up your personal brand. But why LinkedIn? It's a, it's a, it's a, a legitimate question. Um, LinkedIn's very much over 610 million people now across the world, and it's professionals. It's not just anybody. It's not going after that Instagram audience, that Twitter audience, that Facebook audience, that Weibo or WeChat audience. They don't want a billion or two billion. They want professionals, only professionals. So it's about looking at you know, those 610, 620 million professionals and where they are. And as you can see now, <coughs> they really are across the whole of the world. Um, you know, China has 50 million, India nearly 60 million now. Uh, Brazil has 36 million. I love the fact that Colombia has 7 million. I'm wondering what kind of import-export businesses they're doing in Colombia. You know, Escobar, Escobar had his own LinkedIn profile going, yes, who wants to do a deal with Miami? Yes, uh, which I find amazing. I think the internet speeds down there must be quite slow, but they're still. And you look at Brazil, it's got 36 million people in Brazil are using LinkedIn. It's quite phenomenal. And you look at that kind of thing. And it literally is the whole of the world apart from two countries. Russia is not on. So Russia has actually banned LinkedIn and LinkedIn because LinkedIn won't share the data which is ironic because they're sharing the data with China. Because if you go to China, it's a different LinkedIn. It's a Chinese LinkedIn. And basically, it's the same LinkedIn in terms of connections, but if you post anything bad about the Chinese economy or about the Premier, it doesn't get posted. 
So it's a kind of censored LinkedIn, but they also have done a deal whereby they exchange the data. But they weren't prepared to do the same thing with Russia, which tells you how bad Russia must be if LinkedIn won't even do a deal with um, Russia. But they have a deal with China. So just to be aware of that if you're basically um, mailing people in China, uh, because it's a slightly different platform and it's half owned by the government. But at least they're in China, which means you can set up lots of deals there and meetings there. We have lots of clients in Shanghai and Guangzhou and Beijing, for example. So you can do lots of deals there through LinkedIn. You can't do the same with Russia, unfortunately, or North Korea. So those are the two countries kind of missing. But it's very much global. You know, it's very much about a global network. You can find anybody. <coughs> you can learn from anybody by actually looking globally. It's also very much a gamification platform. So basically, it, it basically makes you addictive to actually doing things. Because it says, if you fill in the summary, or if you endorse somebody, or if you send a recommendation, or if you like this, or share this, or comment on this, then basically LinkedIn's algorithm says this person's active, will boost them in the rankings. And it literally is, they will boost your social selling score, they will boost your ranking score if you're actually active. In the same way, if you're not active, they'll actually punish you. They'll actually put you further down the list in terms of uh, rankings because they say, well, this person's not active, we'll put them much more further down the list, which is why it's worth doing something on a daily basis, even if it's just on the mobile. You know, just doing things, liking things, sharing things, engaging, kind of like doing little things. You know, put Facebook down for five minutes, put YouTube down for five minutes, and just do something on LinkedIn because it does pay off. So if you're on the MRT, if you're in a coffee shop, if you're waiting for a friend, if you're basically just, you know, you have those kind of five minutes, 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, it'll make a phenomenal amount of difference to your LinkedIn profile and your engagement levels, your social selling index. So I like this quote, because it's very much about LinkedIn. Obviously not because I like, hello? not because I like James Blunt, because nobody would admit to liking James Blunt in front of an audience. Um, but I like the quote, because it's very much about LinkedIn. I'm self-deprecating because I'm British. If I was American, I would tell you how great I was. And that's very much about how LinkedIn comes across. If you look at American profiles on LinkedIn, they tend to be, yes, I'm fantastic. Yes, I'm amazing. I'm incredible. But many English people, and in fact, Asians and Australians and, and Kiwis, are, no, 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 we can't do that. I can't share that. No, it was a team thing. We worked together on that. I'm not taking the credit for that. The problem with doing that is there will be some American who basically said, no, I did it. And they'll get all the work, and they'll get the jobs, and the employees, and the investment, and everyone will think they're amazing. So you have to do a bit more self-promotion. I know it's not natural for a lot of people, and especially a lot of Asians and Kiwis say to me, and a lot of Australians, Australians even say to me, which surprises me, but Australians even say to me, look, I don't want to you know, promote myself. It's very much a team thing. But you have to get over the fact it's professional. It's not personal, it's professional. So you've got to make sure that you actually do promote yourself. When I was in London, for example, I never used LinkedIn. Because people knew me in London, I was been there for 20 years, I knew everybody in London, they knew me, didn't need to. But over here, when I first came here, nobody knew me. So I had to work a bit harder to actually get some kind of engagement, I had to work a bit harder to actually stand out. Hence the mohawk. Because you actually, and it works across the whole of Asia Pacific in terms of personal branding, and then you basically learn that these kind of things tend to work. So you have to have a bit more confidence in yourself in terms of promoting yourself in a professional capacity. And it's only a professional capacity, it's not the friends and family, it's not the Facebook capacity, it's not the Instagram capacity. So we believe there's four different ways that we've tried and tested over the last kind of like seven or eight years that works on LinkedIn. The first one's very much about you. It's personal branding. People buy people. They don't buy companies. So as much as you're um, selling and marketing IDC, you're actually marketing yourself before you're marketing IDC because people are choosing you to actually engage with, to buy from, to, to sell to, to sell from. So you have to think about how your personal branding comes across, which we'll talk about today. And then it's much about content marketing. So a lot of today is talk about content marketing <clears throat> and how you can use content marketing to en enable yourself to enhance your personal brand and promote IDC, but also promote yourself through content marketing. And then it's about company branding, and then it's about social selling. So we'll touch on all these different aspects um, today. So the first tip is very much about your personal brand, your visual impression. So if I show you this, you'll get a very visual impression of a personal brand. You know, you have the, the, the makeup, you have the, the scars, you have the hair, you have the designer suits, you have a certain brand there, you have certain brand values, for example. So every single person has a visual impression on LinkedIn. And you have a perception of that through your personal branding when you actually see that. <clears throat> so if I showed you, for example, the fact that I believe every single person has a metaphorical mohawk, you have a mohawk too, just have, it doesn't have to be as, as direct as mine, as physical as mine. And you have to think about what's yours. So a good example of that is Karen. Karen is the GPS girl. So she's the girl's voice, she's the woman's voice, for example, on GPS, which basically says recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. She's on two billion devices. And she's also on the voice of Siri. 
So she basically has branded herself as the GPS girl, and she's got gpsgirl.com. But that's not how she makes most of her money. Just like I don't make any money from hair products or anything like that, as much as I wish I'd love to. Um, she makes money from being a keynote speaker, being a concert performer, and being kind of like a coach. But she's using the fact she's the GPS girl as her mohawk. That makes her stand out, because you automatically remember her. She's the GPS girl. I saw a conference with 25 speakers. I don't remember anybody else who spoke. I just remember Karen, because she's the GPS girl. And she came in literally going, recalculating, 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 <laughs> zigzagging through the audience. It was actually amazing. It's like, OK, I like her. She's brilliant. <clears throat> and she's actually one of our women on our rock, spot, rock star you know, speaker service. And she's from New York. She's actually fantastic. She's actually an Aussie, but she's actually moved to New York. Um, you look at Steve Dawson, for example. He's on Fox Sports, and, but that's not what he's selling, because he can't sell Fox Sports. So from a personal point of view, he's selling the fact he's a coach, and he's gone big on the fact he's a coach. Because if he just said to you, I'm on Fox Sports, you go, yeah, that's nice, but I can't buy anything from you. The fact he's saying, I'm a coach, and then he talks about how he was on Fox Sports and what that means and how he's good at presentations actually means something then. So he's been very wise about how he's used his personal brand, how he's looking at his personal brand to communicate that on LinkedIn. Same thing I showed you someone like Andrew Bryant, for example, who's gone for the whole self-leadership, and he owns that whole self-leadership side of things. Nobody else, nobody else really does self-leadership like Andrew. And Andrew's going to be speaking at our social selling conference, for example. <clears throat> and he usually charges $25,000 to do his talk. So it's worth coming along to see him for half an hour at our talk because he's just amazing in terms of how he communicates about you all have self-leadership. Or something like Jacqueline, for example, Jacinta, sorry, who basically very much looking at tech leader. So she's a woman leader who's worked for Dell, worked for Microsoft, and she's talking about how women um, can, uh, can basically lead in the tech sector. And she's absolutely fantastic in terms of how she does things around coaching <coughs> and leadership. And then Avi here, for example, is delivering delight. So he's the delight officer. You know, that's his USP. It makes you go, oh, that's interesting. Nobody else has actually done that. So, you know, everybody is a chief delighting officer. That's his USP. Absolutely fantastic. Very original. So every single person, every single person here has a mohawk moment or moting to actually market themselves. So you need to ask yourselves, what's yours? Have a think about how you want to present yourself on LinkedIn. What's your GPS? What's your delight? What's your self-leadership? What's your tech leader? Think about that in terms of how you come across. And then if you're Sophia the robot, you can be obviously the robot. So Sophia the robot is actually on LinkedIn. <coughs> and I actually met her in Hong Kong. Uh, and is there, she basically is fantastic. And she's now created a mini Sophia. You might have seen her posting about it on LinkedIn. She's now got a mini Sophia kind of running around the place. It's like... Pretty soon she'll be owning LinkedIn, I'm pretty sure, with her AI. But she's amazing, so you can actually follow Sophia the Robot on LinkedIn. So don't do things like this. Because as much as I might aspire to being George Clooney one day, I'm not. <coughs> so I can't use his picture in my profile. <coughs> and this is what I call your classic Facebook photograph. This is like you're down Boat Key, you've had a few drinks, you're in a KTV bar, someone says to you, dress as a panda, Chris, you've had a few drinks, you'll say yes to anything. And then next time you know it, someone's taken a LinkedIn picture and put it on LinkedIn. I'm um, taking a picture and done that, and then you wait. Oh, why did I do that? Don't do Facebook photographs on LinkedIn. Which one's Melita? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Don't do that. Because how do you create a relationship with someone you don't even know who the right person is? And why do people use animals on your LinkedIn profiles? I don't get it at all. <laughs> Unless you happen to be the brand director of Guinness, because that's the Guinness symbol, then don't use that. But he's not in charge of Guinness, so why is he using it? I don't know why you would do that. And then this guy could not decide which photograph to use, so he used all the photographs in one go. And then, of course, on the mobile, it looks so small you can't see any of them. And Elizabeth here went for the full Tinder look. She decided to put her Tinder picture up there and say, yes, this is OK. The problem with doing that, Elizabeth, if you work for the Hyatt Hotel Group, as the human resources manager. Hashtag me too. A not a great thing to do, yes. Really not uh, career enhancing. And if you live in China, definitely, definitely, definitely don't do this. <laughs> Jason hasn't been promoted for many, many years now. It's a very strange thing to do in China. So your personal brand positioning statement is also very important after your photograph. So you look at just do it, that's Nike's. If you look at Apple's, think different. Mine is the only CEO with a mohawk, so I use that. Uh, your headline follows you around, so you have to really think about what your headline is, how it communicates your personal brand and your company brand and what you're actually marketing, because it follows you everywhere. So if I post something, it comes up. 
If I comment on something, it comes up. If I basically get tagged by somebody else, it comes up. If I get searched by somebody, as you can see here, contrast the two, it comes up. And those keywords are in there for a very reason, because they get found. And LinkedIn's a search engine, as Google is, so you get found if you actually put keywords in there. And it also appears in other people's profiles, for example. So it appears that it's marketing me everywhere else, even when I'm not actually using it myself. So I'm there, and then this bloke called Bill Gates is also there. But he obviously everyone knows who he is. Not everybody else knows everybody else. So you have to use your headline, use your keywords there to be basically communicate your personal brand. And then you might want to challenge people. I like the way Mike Naki does this, for example. The coolest guy in Nashville, Google it to see for yourself, because he runs SEO. So we did. And he is. He's the coolest guy in Nashville. I love it. Imagine he came second. Then you have to change his headline to be the second coolest guy in Nashville. Doesn't have the same ring about it. And obviously, if you're hiring, tell people you're hiring. And they know to approach you and say, hey, I noticed you said you're hiring. Let's have a conversation, because I'm looking for a job. And if you're looking for a job, tell people you're looking for a job. Because otherwise, how do I know you're looking for a job? So people say to me, oh, I can't get a job on LinkedIn. I say, well, you haven't changed your headline to say looking for jobs. They no. Well, how do people know? They don't know. But she's communicating the fact that, so we actually approached her. And we had a conversation. My GM had a, pro a conversation about her, about what kind of job she's looking for. Had she not done that, we wouldn't have approached her. I know many, many people, and we've helped many, many people get jobs, just by, and they've had looking for opportunities there. Because people do Google searches or LinkedIn searches on that, on looking for opportunities. And if you do that, you'll come up with thousands of people in your city who are looking for jobs. You don't need to place an advert, because then you can see 10,000 people who basically, and you use the filters on LinkedIn, who actually might be a C-suite looking for a job, or a director looking for a job, or a manager looking for a job, uh, or executive looking for a job, for example. So you can actually use those keywords powerfully to market yourself. But a lot of it's a personal choice. A lot of people don't like to do it. A lot of people basically who haven't completely left their company haven't, don't want to do it. So I wouldn't suggest all you suddenly start going, OK, looking for opportunities. <laughs> I'll get a complaint from Eva going, why did my team have completely all left? <laughs> I help them all get a job. But it is um, a way of actually communicating yourself, because your headline follows you everywhere. So if you're doing a search on somebody and it says, looking for opportunities, or just move to the city, or time for change, then you base your independent consultant, one of those kind of keywords, you then might approach those people on the basis they might be looking for a job. And they might be changed. Much easier than approaching someone who's in a full-time job and it's a waste of time. Okay. So that's why. Right. But it's a personal choice. Okay. So it's a good point to make. Now, your background picture is also phenomenally important because it's advertising. It's a billboard. And so many people don't use it. I mean, I literally change mine like two or three times every single week. It's a billboard. If you see the same billboard every single day, you get bored of it. You don't see it anymore. So the best billboards change on a regular basis. So your background picture like this, for example, so Andrew at the Ritz-Carlton, promote the fact he's got a great big fantastic bar on the top of the uh, Padong. So it's very impactful. He's gone bang with his um, big uh, the, the bar. You've got someone like Dahlia, for example, who's um, promoting euphoric coaching. So she's gone bang with her headline, her branding, her positioning. So your background pictures can be really, really powerful in terms of how you market <coughs> yourself. You've got Ryan here, for example, who's on TV, on BBC, on Amazon Prime, Discovery Channel. He basically climbs mountains and tells people about climbing mountains. So what better do that than a picture of him on a mountain saying, here I am, at the top of the mountain. So it's very, very powerful in terms of how he communicates that. And he communicates it also with his keywords here in terms of TV host, speaker, author, to make sure you know you can learn from him about how he climbs mountains, leadership issues, challenges, and so forth. Jane went for the whole focus on her personal brand. So she's got Jane Amberson, Humility and the New Power, on stage with her book. So she's got her three brand values there, very much there. So you can then see straight away that she is someone that is talking about being humble, and actually, she's a keynote speaker, and she's got a book out there, so she's credible. And you basically see that in one fell swoop on her branding. Think about your background pictures, what you want to communicate with yours. You look at Pippa here, for example. So she's the founder at Pippa Nut, so she's got her brand on her picture. Simple as that. Very impactful. You know immediately that she's an entrepreneur behind this particular brand. It's really, really straightforward. But if she's driving people to her profile, then why wouldn't she then use it to market her profile, her market, her brand, her business? I don't know what Mark's marketing. When it rains, get an umbrella. But he works for Oracle, so God knows what he's marketing. <laughs> but at least it's like eye-catching you go, what? What's that got to do with Oracle? I have no idea. But I'm sure it's some part of some campaign or something like that, and you're supposed to figure it out and ask him about it, the whole thing. But at least he's actually gone out there and done it, which is quite interesting. But LinkedIn is not dynamic. So what I mean by that is, your picture on the laptop is on the left-hand side, which is why there's a big gap on the right on here. It's because on the mobile, it's in the middle. 
So if basically you put something here, then on the mobile, half the people look at your LinkedIn profile can't see it. So you need to make it basically top and to the right is the golden rule in terms of how you use it. Or you use one big picture that basically doesn't matter about the middle parts. But you need to think about how it actually works on the mobile as well as how it works on the laptop because they're different platforms and LinkedIn is not dynamic. It doesn't move your landing page or your billboard picture around. So don't do things like this. Lonely and younger. <laughs> and we've tried to find her because she lives in Singapore. She's on that swing somewhere in some playground in Singapore. We can't find her. So if you know Cindy, tell us who she is. Five years we've been trying to find her. So again, it's not Tinder, so don't do that. And don't do this. Human being. Albert felt the need to put human being now, just in case someone is searching for a human being on LinkedIn. Why would you do that? I'm not sure. This guy went for the whole demigod. And I'm sorry, Dave, but this is not a photograph to sell miracle health. You can't be a demigod looking like that. It could be the George Clooney picture up there, but not with your picture up there. And Shelley Shara went for the whole wife of Stephen Shara. Why would you do that? Especially as Stephen did not reciprocate. He has not got husband of Shelley Shara up there. And surely he should. Because Dale has. Dale's got spouse of owner at Picoso Mexican restaurant. So he has no brand status by himself. He's just going out with someone who owns a dodgy restaurant in Hong Kong. Lecturer at retired and enjoying time with the family. Does he look like he's enjoying time with the family? No, I think he'd rather. Like I think he'd no, I, th I think he'd rather be back at work. I think he'd definitely rather be back at work. He's like, oh my god, another twenty years of this. He's looking at that. And this guy here has basically said he's the CEO, of accelerated digital for global corporates. Amazing, CEO of HSBC. You think, wow, you're the CEO of a multi-billion-dollar brand. Apart from the fact he's not, he's in charge of the website. Now there's a bit of a difference between the CEO of HSBC and the guy in charge of the website. These are two different things. So don't do that. Because nowhere on his profile at all was the, way, the name CEO or the experience CEO. So you can't claim you're a CEO if you're not a CEO. Just like you can't claim you're the managing director if you're, in fact, the personal assistant to the managing director. <laughs> These are completely different jobs. It's like saying I'm the manager of Newcastle United just because I follow Newcastle United. These are two different things. You can't claim one after the other. And if you're going to claim you are the people of the year, uh, make it uh, rele relevant, like in the last 10 years. You know, saying you won an award in 2010 isn't a great thing. Because people go, a bit like a restaurant review on TripAdvisor, you know, you won an award for 10 years ago on TripAdvisor, and you haven't won one since for 10 years. And you go, what happened since? Yeah, this one here is like, what happened in the last nine years? Was there no awards? Nothing worth sharing? But uh, it's a common thing. Miss Switzerland 2013. So that was her biggest achievement. It was six years ago. What happened since? You know, people don't want to basically hear about 2013, they want to have in 2019, 2018. And I don't know what going through Alexandra's na uh, word, net, uh, mind here, we decided to put this here, but as you can see, he doesn't like his head very much. And you know, mobile doesn't look like that either, so I'm not sure what he was trying to do. It's like he didn't look at the picture when he uploaded it, or no one said to him, where's your head gone? Or maybe he's just showing off his arms. I'm not sure what he was trying to achieve here. And if you're going to be a keynote speaker, it's best to get a view like this, not a view like that. <laughs> That doesn't tend to instill the confidence that you're going to attract anybody to your keynote speaking. Because the one person in it is leaving as well, so he's off. <laughs> it's not a great idea, Richard, to do that kind of thing. It really isn't. And don't do things like this, a little dot. And it's like, why would you do a little dot and not check you've done that? And if you're in marketing, you really should use ex your expensive creative. If you're in marketing, you really have got no excuse. He's the chief of, um, marketing officer for VP of marketing at Visa. But he's got nothing in the background picture. Now, Visa have some of the most irritating adverts out there possible, so surely he should use some of his irritating adverts on his own LinkedIn profile. But maybe he hates them so much himself, he doesn't actually want to put them on his own LinkedIn profile. I don't know, but he was at Coca-Cola before that, and he's got nothing up there either. It's a very strange thing to do if you're a marketing director. And unless you work for Marina Bay Sands or Singapore Tourism Board, why would you do this? Because there are about a million other people who also do the same thing. Also put Marina Bay Sands up there. And it's like, really, it's, like, it's not part of your personal brand. It's like if you go to Sydney, everyone's got Sydney Opera House. If you go to New York, everyone's got New York. And it's like, why are you doing this? It's not marketing you, it's marketing the, com the country you're in. It's not personal. Unless, of course, you do actually work for Marina Bay Sands, in which case you obviously have to put the picture at the back. You have no excuse whatsoever. You have to put the picture up there. And you really have no excuse if you work for Marina Bay Sands and you do this. So you've got the most Instagram hotel in the world, and you go, no. I want the blue background instead that LinkedIn just give me. I don't want to use that picture of my brand. So you have to do that. 
Marina Thinker. <laughs> so it's outside the box. It's so not using it. Marina Bay Sands. <laughs> She used it upside down or something. It does something slightly different. Use a mirror image of it or something. I don't know. Do something slightly different. Do a hotel, you know, the view from Marina Bay Sands or something. You know. But aren't people plagiarizing a lot of stuff on Google? Probably. Blatantly. Google for yeah for Google because you can't control it. You know how many of these pictures are actually legitimate pictures? You know they're mostly pictures you get off Google. But you know no one's ever going to prosecute for it unless it's got Getty images all over it or unless it's got some kind of brand on it. Uh, so obviously if you're holding a, an event. At Marina Bay Sands, you can do this. So we've had all our team, for example, use Marina Bay Sands because we've actually got an event there. We're actually saying about the event and about the events at Marina Bay Sands. <clears throat> so we're actually putting a reason behind it, not just putting the picture up there for the sake of putting it up there. And I don't know why people would want to do this. You know, Bell here's got. I used to work for Uber, Netflix, and Spotify, but I'm so ashamed of my current company. I haven't told you where I currently work. Because I used to work for some really good ones, but I don't work for really good ones anymore. And it's like the, the worst people are Googlers. Because basically, if you, go, if you um, LinkedIn ex Google, 46,000 people come up who have the words ex Google on their LinkedIn. It's like saying, well, I used to work somewhere really good, but I don't anymore, but I still want to claim some kind of credit for working there. And it's like, why would you do that? And then this guy actually works at Google, but that's, that's not good enough for him. He still wants to let you know he used to work at McKinsey and he used to work at Goldman Sachs. It's like, why would you do that? It's on your experience section. People can see that. You don't put it in your headline because it looks really, really, fat, look really bad. And this guy, when I went to Zurich and I met this guy, and he clearly did not want to be working at Zurich. He wanted to be working still at BBH. So former head of strategy at BBH, gone client side. And his whole summary section is, oh god, I've been forced to work for Zurich Insurance. It's like, <laughs> made in Germany. Made in Germany, definitely made in Germany, yes. <laughs> he had that German sense of humor. How to work through creating black marketing and then having like. Creating.